This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. Can you tell me a little bit about, okay, KPMG numbers are being leaked to certain media. We're getting numbers for 46 million for a 42 year lifetime. What, uh, what lifespan is accurate? What numbers are accurate? I, I think it's been unclear what life uh, span is accurate. Uh, there's been a number of them used. The PBO used 30 years. The Auditor General, uh, based on flying hours uh, provided by National Defense, used 36 years. The Americans are using a 50-year lifespan. Uh, so I don't know where the 42 came from. Um, but the the overall life cycle cost uh, being up in the uh, 40 billion territory seems to be about accurate. Uh, we the, the math was simple when the uh, select acquisition reports came out from the U.S. last year uh, to take those reports and extrapolate them over a reasonable life uh, span, which would be somewhere between 30 and 40 years. Um, so. The KPMG results, uh, people are speculating, might be tabled uh, the following week when the House is no longer sitting. Right. Uh, is that a way for the Conservatives to avoid the realistic numbers? Yeah, I don't know that they can avoid them, uh, but certainly it's a way to dampen uh, media response uh, to them, and I think uh, they should be tabling them in the House. Uh, that was the commitment of the Minister of Public Works uh, to me, that uh, she acknowledged that it was their commitment to in fact table these reports in the House. So I anticipate, expect that they, they will table them in the House before the end of the week. And we're talk we are hearing from one end that there's a contract that was not committed to. Yeah. Uh, from the other side, that there was a committed to yeah. contract. Yeah. What's the reality there? Well, these these guys some time ago built their own box on the F-35 when they were so adamant that this was the plane that we had to have, and uh, it was Plan A, B, C, and Z was going to be uh, the F-35. And now they're trying to get out of the box they created. Part of the box they created for themselves uh, was. Uh, uh, propagating that they actually had a contract uh, for these planes um, and uh, there there is no contract for the planes they've always been free uh, to go to an open and transparent uh, competition always been free to implement uh, the procurement process as it stands here in Canada and there's nothing that prevents them from doing that now in fact um, the Prime Minister today seemed to want to uh, muddy the waters by suggesting uh, that people would lose their jobs uh, in Montreal. Those workers who, who are working for firms with contracts uh, with uh, the F-35 right now, there's no reason uh, for that to happen if uh, we went out uh, for an open and transparent competition to replace the F-35. Denmark, in fact, is doing that. They are a partner in the Joint Strike Fighter program, and they are also uh, putting uh, their replacement uh, for their F-16s out to tender. So you can be a partner in the program, you yep. can have an unofficial agreement that some are, some are saying that they have an unofficial agreement to buy them directly from the United States government rather than and things of that nature, but it doesn't hold them to anything. Well, the purchase, if you are a Joint Strike Fighter program partner, mm -hmm. uh, you the purchase is from the United States government. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not purchased from Lockheed Martin. Um, so that, that if, if one purchases them that way, by sole sourcing them uh, from the U.S. government, then that's what you do when you're buying them from the U.S. government. But there's nothing that requires our government to do that. Uh, we could have an open competition anytime this government felt like triggering one, we could go that way. Now, they've also made one, uh, several statements repetitively that they've spent no money. Um, mm. Obviously, haven't purchased it yet, but mm. what have they spent money on? So, as a, as a partner in the uh, Joint Strike Fighter uh, Partnership Program, they have committed uh, to $710 million uh, to continue to be part of this partnership. Um, and to let Canadian uh, aerospace industry kind of play in the global supply chain for the F-35. Um, 
And part of the memorandum of understanding that they've signed as part of that partnership exposes uh, the Canadian government to another quarter of a billion dollars worth of liabilities. So another 250 million um, we could incur. They're non-recurring costs that um, that uh, get divvied up amongst the partners in the program. So we are close to this government uh, having committed a billion dollars to this program. And interestingly, Canadian industry has only received less than half of that in terms of contracts. So the Prime Minister's uh, comments today about uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of contracts that have come to Canadian companies, well indeed there have been $435 million worth of contracts that have come to Canadian companies but our government has uh, spent or will is committed to spending uh, close to a billion dollars to be part of the program. Okay, so th by that definition, theoretically, if we had an open competition and a Canadian company won, mm. we would have more jobs and more money going into the can Canadian economy. Oh yeah, so, so if we went through the regular procurement process, then it would trigger the industrial benefits uh, policy and um, there would have to be an e equivalent amount spent by the successful uh, manufacturer uh, in Canada. So if we bought planes for $25 billion, then that policy would require that $25 uh, billion worth of industrial benefits would accrue to Canada. Uh, and of course, under the, this uh, Joint Strike Fighter uh, partnership that we have, uh, no benefits automatically accrue to Canadian industry.